Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here. I got a CCNA and CSENT video boot camp for you here today. We're going to be on the live equipment in just about half a minute. But I want to talk to you about a phrase that absolutely drove me crazy when I first started studying for my, actually my CCNA, and because we didn't have the CSENT then. But I want to make sure that it does not drive you crazy as well. We're going to look at the live equipment and also see a couple of these values in action. And I'm talking about that phrase, locally significant only. You know, and what exactly does that mean? Well, the name really is the recipe, as I often say, because it's simply a value that means a lot to the router or switch that you're on, but it really doesn't mean anything to any downstream switches or routers. It may be a value that's not even advertised. And one of those values, let me bring, uh, let me bring that up so I can type this in. One of those famous values that we've got to be aware of is the frame relay DELSI. It's a very important value, and I'm going to bring the live equipment up here, and you can see that I've run show frame map. You can also always see your DELSI numbers here. Now these DELSIs, again, are locally significant only. They're not being sent to the other routers. They don't have to match any DELSIs on any of the other routers. And if you chose to, let's say that you, uh, you're on a hub router here, R1, and you wanted to use these same DELSI numbers on your spoke routers, you could. And that can lead to a little bit of confusion, but there's no rule against it. Most of the companies I've seen over the years really like to use different DELCs. But again, if you wanted to go to Router 2 and use DELC 122 there to locally identify those connections, those mappings, uh, then you could do so. Another number that I definitely want to show you here that is locally significant only is the number that comes after the router OSPF command. Because you got to watch these, because this kind of thing, again, when you first look at your routing protocols, you got these values that have to match for routers to become neighbors or to become adjacent, and then you'll have other values that do not. This is one of those values that do, does not have to match. And it's really easy to think, okay, well, of course it has to. Well, if we were running EIGRP here, you'll notice this is an autonomous system number. That number does have to match between prospective EIGRP neighbors. But this process ID, it lets you run multiple processes of OSPF on the same router, which is CPU intensive, so we gotta be careful about that. But if you want to run totally separate processes of OSPF on a single router, you can do that, and it doesn't really matter what process ID number you use. So also, one more quick question here for you. We've got that number after OSPF. You know what that is? It's a process ID. It's locally significant only. Router EIGRP, we know we've got the AS number. That is not locally significant only. That has to match between prospective neighbors. What, what comes after a RIP? Just real quick. Absolutely nothing. You can run that single RIP process, but you're not going to give it a number, so we don't have to worry about anything being locally significant only because you're not going to put a number there. So that is it for today's video boot camp. I want to invite you to join us out on Twitter and on YouTube. We're having some great conversations out on Twitter and on Facebook as well, and we've got free eBooks and a lot of changes coming to TBA over the next couple of months, all positive and all thanks to your support. I'm Chris Bryant. Thanks for making TBA part of your Cisco certification success story.